to the SEC on ESPN and the home of the defending national champion Auburn Tigers as they get set for their season opener with that national championship trophy in hand led by 24 seniors in last year's BCS title game this year they come onto the field with 24 freshmen and they will try and do their best in a championship chase that gets underway today against Utah State. I'm Beth Mullins along with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti. A lot of new faces on the field today for Auburn. And the one that everyone will be watching initially is their new quarterback, Barrett Trotter. No question. If you have to replace a Heisman Trophy winner in Cam Newton, you've got to find somebody to step in. They hope that Barrett Trotter will reinvote his 2007 season at Briarwood Christian where he actually threw for 47 touchdowns and only intercepted. He's a pocket passer. He's not going to do the running game that Cam Newton did. That's why they have to rely on the running backs, Michael Dyer and Ontario McCaleb, to do the bulk of the running game. And he should have a lot of confidence handing it off to these two guys who rushed for over 1,900 yards. Dyer over 1,000 on his own. Dyer is the power guy. McCaleb is the speed guy. Coach Chizik says he is the fastest player on the field. Every time he touches the ball, there's a danger of him hitting his, hitting his head on the goalpost. <laughs> and amongst uh, the freshmen in the red shirt, fr freshmen, none more prominent than that man right there, 18 years of age, Reese Dismukes. Last December, he was playing here at Jordan Hare Stadium, winning a state championship. Now he will be prominent in getting this up-tempo attack rolling today for Auburn. How about on the other side for Utah State? They lose their best player, but they get four guys back that they didn't have last year. Yeah, it's amazing. They've got two running backs and two receivers that return from injury. Robert Turpin, Michael Smith at the running back positions. Stanley Morrison, Matt Austin, the receiver. Over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns, and they're all veterans. Their best player, DeAndre Bell, graduated at quarterback, so they, too, have a new signal caller in hostile territory today at Jordan Hare. Gary Anderson, the head coach for the Aggies in his third season. A couple of four and eight campaigns, but high expectations this year. And Gene Chiswick engineering that 14-0 season last year, 22-5 now in his third season. They come in ranked number 22 in the country. Cody Perky will handle the kicking duties amongst all their losses from last year's team. It includes their entire kicking unit. And Utah State will send back one of the best return guys in the country in Kerwin Williams, number 25 in white. And it will bound towards him inside the five. Williams breaks a tackle out across the 20 to the 24-yard line. And we will welcome in true freshman Chucky Keaton. Last year, he had a season similar to Cam Newton, Mike. 2,000 yards passing, 1,000 rushing, but that was at Cypress Creek High School in Houston. You're right. You know, he's a two-year <laughs> captain, though. He rushed for 1,000 yards each of his junior and senior seasons. They feel like he's got that it factor, both leadership and savvy, but he can make things happen. His first collegiate appearance, and it's against the defending champs. And a knee down on the catch from Chuck Jacobs. One of the things that happens with young quarterbacks, they tend to rush throws. He didn't get his feet set, so what happened is the receiver had to go down, caught the ball with the knee on the ground. Very difficult. That stopped the play before it gets started. And one thing that offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin doesn't like to see is negative yardage plays, and they lose three on their first of the day. They will show all kinds of different looks. And on the delay, with a Robert Turbin trying to scoop to the outside across the 30. Pick up of eight on the play. The backs and receivers, well, there's Turbin, who just had the carry over 1,300 yards two years ago. And Matt Austin, their senior wideout, will be their go-to guy, as well as their bailout guy. The offensive line returns intact. Anchored by center Tyler Larson. He's on the Remington watch list. Third and five. Keaton running the option and the keeper. Close to the 35, but he had to get just beyond it for the first down. Nozi Igwe and Kenneth Carter on the stop. 
The real question is with a young quarterback on the road, you do something here in your own territory, fourth and one half yard. I don't think so, but you never know. You got to take some chances in order to win on the road in the SEC. Well, this is something, uh, Mike, that had your knees knocking a little bit. The thought of a true freshman returning a punt, and that's the case for Auburn with Trevon Reed. That's the most difficult thing in college football, in my opinion, is to catch a punt with guys running down. Luckily, he didn't even have to touch that one, so we're going to switch it over. And the redshirt freshman will let that one go after the punt from Tyler Bennett, 45 yards, and here is Barrett Trotter. A red shirt, then a knee injury, then backing up Newton a year ago, getting his first start. And he's a pocket passer. He's not going to scare anybody with his running ability, but he can move. They will move the pocket. But Coach Malzahn loves him because he's savvy. He's an accurate passer, and he's got four years in his system. He's the most experienced guy, although he's only throwing nine passes. Nine passes, has five carries and a touchdown in his career. Told us yesterday he feels very comfortable. Three years in the system, and the gift to McCaleb. We're going to get to the outside, and he's hauled down. Good pursuit of the tackle from Tavares McMillan, the outside linebacker. And one of the things that Auburn talks about doing is getting McCaleb in space, let him get his speed in space, the running start, the fly sweep concept. They're going to test the flanks of this Utah State defense. 810 yards rushing a year ago for McCaleb. Every touch, he's a threat to hit his head on the goalpost, is what Chizik told us, and here he is again. Behind the line of scrimmage, Kyle Gallagher with good pursuit. It's a great job in the pursuit, Beth. You hit right on the head because he's made the first guy miss both times he's carried the ball, but the pursuit has gotten to him and not allowed him to get outside where he can really turn it on. And here is the up-tempo offense for Auburn. They want to try and run 80 plays per game. They'll go no huddle here on third and long. This is defensive advantage. When you're in third and long, the defense controls it. Trotter drops it off to McCaleb. Has to beat a couple of guys to get to the marker and is bumped out well in advance of it. Gallagher and Nevin Lawson coming up from the secondary. Both defensive coordinators have to be happy. If you can force a punt on that first possession, you create a little momentum for your defense, and that's really uh, important for both teams trying to make a defensive personality show up. Stephen Clark, the sophomore from Kansas City, will get set to punt it away here on fourth and short. Erwin Williams standing on his own 26-yard line. Erwin will have a go at it. He led the country in return yardage last year. To the 37-yard line, and that's where Utah State will have it on its second possession. In the house of the defending national champs. You're watching ESPN College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. Both teams go three and out in their first possession. The Auburn Tigers in blue. The Aggies of Utah State out of Logan, Utah in white. And their true freshman quarterback, Chucky Keaton, out into the flat. To Stanley Morris into the 40-yard line, and a flag flies late as Morrison's helmet goes flying. And I think you grab that helmet, it's just like a face mask. That's an automatic penalty. But again, they're not uncomfortable letting Chucky throw the ball. He came out first play of every series has been a pass. That was the same one before. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask, number 25 on the defense. Penalty 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. To take a look again, you see it at the end of the play, right there, grabbed it and just ripped it off, which uh, that that hurts. Oof. That's Darren Bates. Darren Bates, and again, Darren Bates has made the transition from safety to linebacker. He's a very physical player, as you saw by that play. Michael Smith. The senior, number 20, now in the backfield, joining Turbin. They'll show the pistol this time. Keaton, the keeper, and some good pressure right up the middle to force his hand on that. They're very comfortable with Keaton carry the ball 
Obviously, this is a read play. The, they get penetration inside pretty quick. You see the defensive end coming off the edge. Now he's got to keep it. Gets outside. He's welcome to the SEC. They're, a, they're very comfortable with the, him carrying the football, which is good. Now, Craig Sanders didn't give him the option there to hand it off. He was in the backfield in a hurry. Michael Smith, he's got a lot of room. Best end of the second half. Michael Smith, touchdown, Utah State. 43 Great. yards in the early lead. Great block by Taron Lloyd. And again, one of your fears on defense. As you see, if you get past the initial line of scrimmage, he's unstopped. Great block right there down the field. Splits the safeties off to the races. Has the speed to finish the play. Kerwin Williams, the junior from Las Vegas, got that carry. <laughs> Kerwin Williams, 43 yards in the early score. ESPN's College Football is presented by 5-Hour Energy. 5-Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Visit 5-HourEnergy.com and in part by Kingsford Charcoal. For your chance to win $10,000 and support your college team, play Kingsford's College Showdown on ESPN.com. And AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. The Auburn University campus, and Kerwin Williams has quieted the crowd with the 43-yard touchdown run going off the left side. Utah State came close a couple of years against Texas A&M, lost by a score, lost by a touchdown last year at Oklahoma, and they really thought they had poor starts to both those games. Not the case today. And it's Trey Mason. And it is first touch, and he's looking to electrify the crowd. And Mason out to the 38-yard line, 35 yards on the return. And here's Wendy Nix in the studio. Sam, thank you. Here's a look across our ESPN networks. Luke Fickle making his head coaching debut for Ohio State facing Akron on ESPN. Of course, we have Auburn and Utah State here on ESPN2 and Northwestern without Dan Persa on the road at Boston College on ESPNU. Sam? Beth Mullins and Mike Bellotti here at Jordan Harris Stadium. And now, how does this young team respond? Down a touch. Wildcat formation with Dyer in the backfield. Dyer takes the direct snap. And he'll pick up a few. Getting out across the 40 yard line. We saw them working on this in practice, and they were running a variety of plays. But he was the quarterback in the Wildcat setup. Trotter is back in there. Dyer to the right. McCaleb in the backfield. Dyer in motion. He'll get it again on the cutback. And Dyer picks up a couple more. To the 44-yard line. Burris McMillan with the stop. Auburn offensively, well, McHale of the fastest guy on the team, and Emory Blake had a touchdown in the last three games of last season, including the BCS championship. Brandon Mosley at left tackle, the lone returning starter, and by the accounts of his coaches and teammates, he is the toughest guy on the team. By acclamation by everybody. <laughs> Offense, defense, coaches, quarterbacks, defensive line, all say he is the toughest guy. They really want to push the pace, and here on third and five, they want to keep the possession. Trotter to the air, wide open is Blake at the 40. Still on his feet. Emory Blake, he's going to take it away. And Auburn responds with six of its own. is their go-to guy. We talk about him being the MVP, the old man of the group, and the guy they trust, but he makes a big play with his feet as well as his hands to even the score. Looks like they might be missing somebody. They're waiting here. Uh, probably one of those big tackles. Forgot he's supposed to be on that extra point. 
Well, that's the veteran, 75 yeah. Mosley. <laughs> Must have got so excited. Cody Perky handled kickoffs last year, but of course they had Wes Byram, so this is his first PAT attempt. Ties it at seven. The speed of Emory Blake. Four games in a row dating back to last season with a touchdown. And how about that burst? And the reaction from Barrett Trotter with his first career touchdown pass. Eight fifty nine to go in the first quarter here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn responding to Utah State. Fifty six yards. Barrett Trotter to Emory Blake. And the first touchdown pass of the new quarterback's career. And certainly, you know, the Auburn offensive guys have to feel good. Gary Anderson, as good as he felt about his defense on the first series, cannot feel the same way. Parky to kick it away. Through the end zone, Cole Williams will not have an opportunity to take it at the 20. Mike Bellotti, let's go back to that Auburn touchdown. Yeah, one, Auburn got great protection. They, they don't bring in a four-man rush. It's a crossing route, comes across, does a nice job of making somebody miss right here. But the real key has got to be discouraging for Utah State. Nobody has the speed to catch Emory Blake. He just turns on the Jets. Great score. Utah State touchdown. One thing here. Watch this guy. He's a great block. He does an unbelievable job of containing the defensive end, starting at the point of attack, making the initial hole. Running back goes through untouched to the end zone. That was Taryn Lloyd, the senior out of Bountiful, Utah, with the block to spring Kerwin Williams. Two tight end set turban around in the backfield. Keaton with the short drop and the good completion right across the 25 with Travis Van Leeuwen. A couple of quick strikes for both sides. A minute three for Utah State, a minute and a half for Auburn. Didn't take very long. You want to score quickly. One of the things that Coach Anderson talked about, too, was handling prosperity, the idea they scored first and it's okay, but also the adversity of giving yep. up the quick touchdown. Sometimes difficult to stay even keeled in this kind of environment for the Aggies. Five wide. The true freshman Chucky Keaton by himself in the backfield. And a whistle over on the far sideline. Gary Anderson wants a timeout for the Aggies. His freshman was struggling there. We'll take a timeout as well. We're tied at seven at Auburn. Eight ten to go in the first quarter. We are even at seven apiece. Utah State with the ball. Five wide receivers, and now they'll shift their alignment on second and short from their own 27. Keaton will give the turban out across the 30-yard line. We are at the home of the Auburn Tigers, the defending national champions. Beth Mowens along with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti. A couple of new quarterbacks in our game today, and in particular, Chucky Keaton, the true freshman on the road. Yeah, and you saw a play before where the coaches had to call timeout from the sidelines. He either the, it didn't read the signal right or wasn't sure about the formation and or the defense. But he did the smart thing. They got no penalties. Again, he'll come back. I think it's interesting, both quarterbacks, Barrett Trotter, set in the pocket very well and seemed comfortable there. He's been here a lot longer. One of the toughest jobs, perhaps, in the country, trying to replace Cam Newton. But Barrett Trotter has his first career touchdown pass today. There was a flag at the end of that play. Uh, Gene Chizik wondering about a sideline warning that they received. Utah State picks up the first down. Keaton feels the heat, slides out across the 40. Let's send it back to Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. It's a Taco Bell studio update after a tumultuous offseason. Ohio State on the field and on the board. Terrell Pryor's replacement, Joe Bowserman, calling his own number, rolls out, takes it in from 15 out. 7 0 Buckeyes. Thank you, Wendy. Second and five. 
Dropping it off to Smith. Spins it at the 42 and out across midfield into Auburn territory. And another Utah State first down. One of the things you like about a freshman quarterback is the ability to feel things set after see it. Feel the rush coming off that weak side there. He's untouched. He feels it. Doesn't look and see it. He feels it. Just rolls. That's why they love his escapability. First and ten. Robert Marshall is the offset back, and the carry will go to Michael Smith. Marshall gets him a nice block and hits him another first down. Nico Thorpe on the stop, but not until Smith had picked up a dozen. Well, college football returns to ABC tonight. The reigning Pac-12 champs, Chip Kelly's Oregon Ducks, taking on the LSU Tigers and Les Miles in the Cowboys Classic. It is all a part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week Saturday at 8 on ABC. College football lives here. And Utah State not shying away from quickly running another offensive play. Jacobs inside the 30. Be aware that last pass was a lateral. He could be setting up the double pass off of that look. Offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin told us the other day they'll run some three and four tight end packages. They'll call, they'll do a muddle huddle, which they will partially huddle or not huddle at all. Yeah, it's, it, what you just saw was the muddle huddle. Some guys hang around the center, everybody else just getting to their spots. Here's that two and three tight end look also that we talked about earlier. They'll bunch on the left side with Turbin in the backfield and some movement. Evans got a jump defensively on the right side, but he was lured. Yeah, one of the issues is not the veteran offensive line. They have five returning starters up front. Those guys are veterans, but sometimes the young quarterback, his intonation or his calling of the cadence is not always Ball the same. Star. 91 on the offense. Penalty is five yards. Down the main I think they actually was on the left guard, but. <laughs> They called it on DJ Tialava, the 6'4 sophomore out of West Jordan, Utah. You want to eliminate unforced errors. That's they, they were in a great situation. Now they're in more of a normal second and long. Second and eight. Turbin and Smith in the backfield together. They had Austin and they couldn't get it to him. And Stanley Morrison in all kinds of trouble back at the 44. And the double reverse pass. They had the guy deep. Unfortunately, too much pressure from that Auburn defense on that side. You see it here. how it starts. There's a toss back. Got a chance, but guy's right in his face. And there's a receiver running completely clean, 20 yards behind the secondary. Ted Ruth, <laughs> the defensive coordinator for Auburn. He knew his man was beat deep. But some good pressure on the ball, preventing Morrison from the throw. 13 yards on the loss. It's third and 20. This is third and forever. Keaton with time. Has a man and a first down. I'll tell you what. That's going to frustrate Ted Roof much more. Because to run down the field and pick up a third and 20 really is difficult. You can see again, they're taking a guy right down the middle, two deep zone, goes over the top of the linebackers. Nice throw. A better throw could have allowed him to keep running and possibly even score. They needed 20. They got 25 to Xavier Martin. Chucky Keaton showing some tremendous poise in the pocket. And delay to Turbin. He's got Smith blocking in front. Takes a big pop from Evans at the 11. The spot might give him another first down. Chucky Keaton, the true freshman in his first collegiate appearance. Got a nice drive right here. You know, right now, the, the Utah State offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. The longer the play gets to develop, the better they're doing it blocking that Auburn front. That's a good start to your career. Perfect five for five in the air. Second and short, Williams. He's going to lose one. There's the kind of push you like, the kind of response from a defense. They get inside the 20. We're going to bow our backs, not let them in, not let them get that one yard. Let's kick them out of here, make them try to kick a field goal. 
All four sophomore defensive linemen had a hand in on that stop. Third and short on the 10th play of the drive. Williams, he's got it inside the 10. Middle linebacker Jake Holland along with Jonathan Evans on the tackle. Last year, Auburn was great against the run, only giving about 109 yards a game. They don't have Nick Fairley inside. It's a huge difference now. They've got to find that guy that can be the disruptor. Williams off the left side to the five. Demetrius McNeil on the stop. Look for play action here. They've pounded them, and again, they've had success running the football. That sets up this red zone area right here, second and long, is typically a play action down. And Mike, we are seeing this experienced offensive line getting the job done here for Utah State. Williams up the middle, gets to the four, third and goal coming up. They were the best team in the WAC in the red zone last season. And that was without all the big weapons they have this year. And when you're on the road playing an SEC team, I know Utah State wants a touchdown here. They don't want to settle for a field goal. Eric Motes is the receiver off to the right. The give is to Turbin. Will be short. Stacked up by Nico Thorpe and Nosa Igwe. Somewhat stubborn by Utah State in terms of running the ball three times down there. Also, though, Auburn has to feel good about that defense bowing its back as we talked about. We'll see what happens now. Fourth down. Oh, excuse me. Third. Number 22 is to Sharvin Bell down in the end zone. Junior out of Kissimmee, Florida, who was a starter in both the SEC championship game and the BCS final last year and has emerged as one of their leaders in fall camp. He's number 22 in blue. They can never afford to lose him. He's their starting corner. He's also their starting nickel in the nickel defense. And after that collision, he is now up and trotting over to the sideline. It's fourth and goal from the three, and uh, they are talking about going for it here, and Chucky Keaton has stayed on the field with the offense. My point is, in order to win this game, Utah State has to score a touchdown every time they get in the red zone. Chucky Keaton, the true freshman. Three yards out on the fourth down play. Just speed off the edge, and obviously they made a great decision in saying you're a freshman, but you're our starter at quarterback because of what you can do with the ball in your hands. Kept the drive alive on a third and 20 play. Okay. And now Chucky Keaton finishes it off with the three-yard run. All right, coming right into your living room. Here you see the speed that he's got. Does a nice job of breaking the tackle, gets into the end zone. Nice job. 14-7, Utah State with the lead. And Chucky Keaton impressive on an 80-yard scoring drive that took over seven and a half minutes, 15 plays, including a third and 20 conversion, and then the fourth and three touchdown run. Jacob Howder kicks it away. Trey Mason came right in front of Quan Bray to get it. Diving out to the 26-yard line. 
And now for our Saturday menu, brought to you by Applebee's. What's appealing to you there, Mike, on the menu? Well, I love that Oregon LSU game. I think two top five teams and two unbelievable offenses. Talented defense for LSU. Going to really be the frenetic pace of Chip Kelly versus Les Mile and Rabbit's foot. I'm going to keep an eye on that other one then. Boise State, Kellen Morris, 38 and 2 as a starter. And Aaron Murray, who had over 3,000 yards passing last year at Georgia. Big night tonight on ESPN and ABC. Trotter will give to Michael Dyer, the offensive MVP of last year's BCS title game. And what a day Mike Dyer had in helping them get to the championship. That run was unbelievable. That, that was a play that will be remembered forever. Auburn coaches are not telling the offense, all right, guys, we got to respond. We can't fall behind by two scores. Take it down, get a score. Dyer may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. That memorable run was one of his 22 carries. He had 143 yards last year in the final on that play in particular where it looked like he was down, but got the hand down and his knee and his body never went down. He was able to continue the run on that game-winning drive. Haven't had a guy come back to Auburn after a 1,000-yard season since Kenny Irons in 06. Boy, wrapped up by the preseason whack defensive player of the year, Buddy Wagner. Made a statement about the toughness in the whack right there. Well, it, again, they've done a good job against the run all day today. Their Achilles heel has been the pass, and so now again, that's three straight downs running the football. Auburn wants to establish something. Didn't happen in that series. That'll take care of the first quarter. They're watching the SEC on ESPN. Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, and Utah State trying to pull off the big upset. They've got the touchdown lead over the defending national champions. Fourth and two, fake alert. And I would think that Utah State has their safe punt return on the field, which means more defensive players. Hope will kick it away. Motes is telling his teammates to get away from it. Good Auburn bounce as it kicks inside the 15, down at the 12-yard line. It's a new and improved Auburn defense today. Let's take a look at some of the defensive stops brought to you by Wagner Brakes. Well, Utah State's doing a great job. It may not be the first guy, but the second and third guys are getting there to tackle, which is pursuit. They're just getting there, gang tackling, wrapping up, and making sure that the offenders are taking the ground. And then there's just Bobby Wagner doing it on his own, one-on-one, on one because he does that. He's led their league in tackling two years in a row. It was a defense that gave up 34 points a game last year, so head coach Gary Anderson named himself the defensive coordinator this year, and they switched to the 3-4 defense. Well, so far, Utah State really controlling the game on the ground. 97 rushing yards for Utah State, 15 for Auburn. We've got a touchdown on the ground from Kerwin Williams and another one from their quarterback, Chucky Keaton, and the freshman going back to work. The running back, Robert Turpin, was out in the flight. All down by Jim Collins. How about the numbers from the first half? The first quarter, excuse me. Yeah, that's some domination. Only one first down for Auburn. That's not what they want. They're accustomed to more, and they're accustomed to running the football. Auburn's lone score was the 56-yard touchdown pass, so their defense has been out there an awful lot on a very hot and humid day. Second down and a couple. Jordan, he's got the yardage. He's been very patient yeah. taking the handoffs today, Mike. They're running some misdirection, misdirection stuff. They're yeah. taking the back one way, having him stop and read the blocking, and it's confusing the defensive front of Auburn. One of the things that Coach Anderson talked about was they had to handle the hype of playing the national champion, the heat, the noise, and the physicality of the Auburn defense. So far, they're doing that. We were told that Auburn is going to have to defend by committee today, and they will certainly have to do that if they are out on the field this much. Keaton to Mike Austin. 
Fox tried to bump him out, but Austin towed the line and got another first down. That committee, by the way, is down a man today, Mike. El Toro Freeman, one of their seniors, their backup middle linebacker, we were told just before kickoff today that he is ineligible due to an, ad an administrative oversight. Yeah, that's a shame, and I don't know what that means, but it's tough to lose a guy on a Friday night because he's practiced the entire fall camp. Now you haven't got his backup reps, and he's not there either. Keaton tried to drop it off to Smith incomplete. I'll tell you what I've, I've been impressed with is the coaches' trust in him. They're throwing the ball from one hash all the way to the other sideline, not down the field, which is scary. Oh, yeah. this No, this, this last play could have been big. This screen would have gone had he caught it just a little high. And one of the things, too, with a quarterback, young quarterback, you've got to learn to drop the screen. You don't throw it. You drop it over the top of the on-rushing defensive lineman. That's his first incompletion. He has six passes to six different receivers here in the first half. He's got another completion right there to his tight end, Taron Lloyd. Down to the 42. Right now, Utah State has developed a very good rhythm. They're keeping the defense of Auburn off balance. They're not allowing. To, they're not getting in long yard situations where they're having to be able to defend the blitz. So they're keeping it in either or situations. Takes the advantage to the offense. Michael Smith is the setback, and he'll get the carry. Look at him shed the first guy that hit him. How it looks like he's got the first down again. We talked about the advantage of having those veteran running backs that understand how to run for that tough one or two yards when necessary. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof told us yesterday they have got to stop the run. They have not thus far. Utah State over 100 yards on the ground. And Robert Turbin might try and churn some more out right here with a couple of tight ends. Play action to Turbin. Keaton looking deep, incomplete. Nice. Overthrows Keegan Anderson. Nice coverage by Nico Thorpe. He saw that. He has been accused of keeping his eyes in the backfield too long, but he read that play action, saw the route down the field, did a very nice job. He's the safety inside. You can see him come there, reads it, takes the, makes the speed turn because he used to play corner. Great position to defend that pass. Bates showing blitz, hand off the turbine, may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Jamar Travis with the hit. We talked about the idea that Auburn had been in behind the sticks. They were in front of the sticks. It was second and ten. They came with a blitz that time, zone blitz, right into the play. Nice job, nice call by Ted Roof. Third and 11 on their last drive. Utah State converted a third and 20. I would anticipate some type of blitz to try to shake the confidence of the freshman quarterback. They rush four. They set up the bubble screen. Well, they will be short. Again, we talked about the idea. This is probably right on the edge of your decision. Are you, you going to kick a field goal? You're going to go for it. You're going to fake punt. This is that decision time for a head coach in terms of what do you want to do? Are you the favorite? Are you supposed to win? Or are you the underdog and do you have to go for it? The kicker, Josh Thompson, did not attempt the field goal, did not play last year. So they will go for it on fourth down with five wideouts. Watch out for the mobility of the quarterback. And again, I think Ted Roof says, wait a second. We want to make sure we're ready to line up. They've converted once on fourth down. Utah State will try again when we come back to Auburn. Touchdown lead for Utah State and a fourth and six for the Aggies from the Auburn 34. Auburn has to account for the mobility of the quarterback, Chucky Keaton, and yet cover the wide receivers. Keaton looking left, throwing left, Terry reaching out for the first down. 
Great individual effort. They chose to come with the blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. The quarterback went to the right guy. He's the guy that's uncovered right there off the ball. You see him stop short of the line and then have to fight, reach over, control it. Really nice execution to get the first down. Two for two on fourth down conversions. Gary Anderson loves it. The SEC is supposed to be the more physical conference, but it is the whack front line that is owning the trenches right now. Right now, the experience of that Utah State offensive line versus the freshmen and sophomores that are playing for Auburn are winning the day. Molina Sanchez, Assisi, Larson, Napoli, Schultz, and Lloyd. All of them had started coming in. Assisi and Larson started every game last year for them. Second and eight, Turbin the setback. Keaton delivers to Lloyd as tight end with another catch in traffic. Inside the 15, move the chains again for the Aggies. I tell you what, that was great patience by the quarterback. The tight end broke out. There was a defender there. He stopped and came back to the inside, and Keaton had the wherewithal to lead him that way. That's a veteran move. That's not something you expect a true freshman quarterback to do in his first game on the road in the SEC environment. I'm really really impressed so far and again with his ability to control the ball because they haven't put the ball on the ground yet and that's really important play action keaton trying to set it with tuck it and run he's trying to beat evans to the end zone jumps out of bounds inside the five and the spot should give them a first and goal we've said it already playing with the maturity well past his age here you see him tuck back he's in the pocket now there's nobody. He looks back, finds, feels a big seam there, and then shows the speed and the ability to make a guy miss at the end and not take punishment. Last year at Cypress High School in Texas, and now in front of 85,000 at Auburn. Keaton gives to Tobin. Nothing doing right up the middle. The good push from Whitaker and Carter. Coach Roof talked about he needs Jeffrey Whitaker to be the guy in there to create push, to change the pocket, to stop the run, to allow his linebackers to run to the football. They really need it right here at this part of the field. That's 54 in blue. He makes a push again. And the second effort coming up just a bit short. Lemonier able to hold him up till some help arrived. Lemonier, not the biggest guy. He's, he's grown, though, to about almost 240. It's still a mismatch down there against the offensive lineman and tight ends. He's giving up some weight. He's the guy they want coming off the edge in passing situations. They're going to challenge him right here. Turbin again. And on the 16th play of the drive, he punches it in. We probably have a little bit more of a ball game than... Auburn would like at this point but the experience again of the Utah State offensive line and backfield with the addition of this mobile young quarterback sort of amazing so far Thompson's PAT is good three rushing touchdowns here in the first half for Utah State Turbin from two yards out Really, the defensive line trying to get settled. They're really not there, ready to go. Nobody to stop the ball coming in. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Verizon. Power your business with the Verizon 4G LTE, the fastest, most advanced 4G network in America. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Those are the oak trees at Toomer's Corner at Magnolia and College here at Auburn. The tradition, of course, to toilet paper those oak trees after big wins. And the story in the offseason, a man allegedly poisoned those trees. 
and there is still a lot of concern here around Auburn as to whether or not the trees will survive. They should know more, we are told, next spring about the long-term health of Tumor's Oaks. And Auburn could use a big return right here, and they will get one for Trey Mason. He's gone. Trey Mason jumped in front of the other returner last time to take the ball. You now you see why he's hungry. He's got the speed and the elusiveness. And boy, did he hit that 97 yards. You can see it again. Takes it right there, handles it not quite cleanly, but then right here he doesn't slow down. He hits that blind faith, we call it, and then it's off to the races. 97 yards for the true freshman from Lake Worth, Florida. And Auburn needed that, although it puts their defense right back on the field. <laughs> Time of possession is not usually a big thing, but 17 minutes for Utah State, 4 minutes, 43 seconds for Auburn. The defense can be tired. We're watching the SEC on ESPN. And in Jordan Harris Stadium, the fans watching the defending national champs, they're down a touchdown. Uh, but they have the momentum and they get a chance to see their offense again, which they have not seen for the last 22 plays. But on the end around, Trevon Reed with a flag down at the end of that play as Reed picked up a couple. Yeah, the Auburn offense needs to get untracked. They have yet to really get anything going, and looks like the penalty is going to be against them, which really puts the offensive coordinator in a tough situation. You're looking at first and 20, first and 25, whatever it may be. Number 79 on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. And that's not what you want when you just capture the momentum by scoring, holding them on defense. You get the ball back, now you start on a hole. Our, our crack staff out in the production truck uh, got the number for us, Mike. The offense has been on the sideline for 29 minutes in real time prior to that play, and the first play back out there, a penalty will push them back. Lutz and Kirken in motion. The give is to McCaleb. He scoots forward for a few yards. Barrett Trotter probably had to re-warm up again. <laughs> that long. You know, Gus Malzahn was itching to get back out there. They've only run nine plays. Remember, their goal is to run 80 per game. 211 yards already for Utah State. That's, that's very impressive. The reason for the delay, a long Utah State drive, and then the kick return touchdown for the Auburn Tigers. Trotter. Complete to Emory Blake. Those are the two guys that hooked up for the touchdown earlier and a good second effort from Blake diving for the first down. One of the things that Utah State has to be concerned with is they've stopped the run, but they have been vulnerable to the pass. It's almost like you don't want to stop them too soon, but given a lot of cushion here. You see Emory Blake and a guy that took it for the touchdown early. You cannot give him that much room. Jamani Robertson, a J.C. transfer, probably still learning a little bit about this defense. Blake scored on a short down and in that he then ran for 56 yards at a timeout here from Utah State. Well, we knew coming in there was a lot of new faces on the Auburn side and that the experience would actually be with Utah State. And I think, Mike, that has shown most importantly on the offensive line and with those four guys that were hurt last year that are all back with their uh, skill guys. We talked about over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns of experience coming back. That's unbelievable. The improvement has been on the defensive side. To me, the scary part about this is special teams. Auburn has more talent on the field when the special teams occur. Utah State has to be very careful of giving up the long returns as we've already seen. Well, from two newcomers in our game to two very experienced ones tonight in Atlanta, Kellen Moore and Aaron Murray coming off of big years last season. It's Boise State and Georgia. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game is part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN and ESPN3 Saturday at 8 Eastern. That's also streaming live on WatchESPN.com. Get that app for your mobile phone. Michael Dyer 
breaking a tackle. You're not going to bring him down with one arm. And on the fourth guy to get a hold of him, he's finally brought down after a pickup of six. And that's what Michael Dyer can do. He breaks tackles. Kudos, though, to the Utah State defense. They kept making him go laterally, work him to the sideline, work to your 12th defender. There's a flag. Flag before the snap. And again, Brandon Mosley, their most experienced offensive lineman, wanted to get a jump on that snap count. Lost star, 75 on the offense, 25 yards. Second down. Lee Zemba, Ryan Pugh, Brian Isom, Mike Berry, the four starters up front that are gone this year. Mosley is the only guy back. Auburn, by the way, has 14 guys that are still having a shot at making an NFL team from that championship team a year ago. 14 guys there and eight freshmen in the two deep on offense. <laughs> That was the fourth penalty of the day on Auburn. Trotter off the pump. Drops it over the top of the defense. Was Reed in bounds. The officials along the sideline are going to talk about it, and it looks like they will give it to him at the 41, and that'll move the sticks. View of this, let's see. We'll take a look here. He's got to have one foot down inbounds, and it looks like it was. We're sort of blocked, but looked like he had that foot. Second look there. Yeah, that one foot comes down inbounds. I believe they're probably going to review this, though. It's that close. They'll actually mark him inside the 40. One of the new things this year, Mike, is that the coaches now in the press box upstairs have a monitor. On the field with the catch. So they can see the plays and whether or not they want to review it. It's an interesting dynamic because in the past, coaches never had any views. They just had to say, hey, what did you see? Do you think you saw it? And you'd have whatever replays could be seen in the stadium. Now they have a monitor that can be tied into feeds to give them another look. The hard part from this angle is seeing where that sideline yeah. is based on where his feet came down. Need just the one foot down. And it's, it's got to be the first foot down. If a that foot comes down out of bounds before the other foot comes down inbounds, it doesn't count. And I'm not sure. There's, he's got one foot inbound and one foot out of bounds. The question is, was the inbounds foot down first? If they do rule it inbounds, I think they also may move it back just outside the 40. Look like if the foot was down, it was around the 41. I agree with you, though. Instant replay is an amazing deal because, you know, the, the officials do a tremendous job and they have to make instantaneous split-second decisions on things that sometimes we go back and look at it ten times on the thing and can't decide really what happened. This, by the way, is not a challenge from Utah State. It's a review up in the booth. So it would not uh, cost them a timeout if they don't get it to go their way. For Auburn, that's a positive play for Barrett Trotter. He rolled out, bought time under pressure, put a ball where it could be caught to make a huge first down potentially. And they need this from a momentum standpoint. Which isn't necessarily his strength, right? We talked to him. He's much more comfortable in the pocket. He does get out of it here to make the throw. Yeah, I would think, again, based on that look that we have, it just really depends on that other foot, whether it was down out of bounds first. He definitely has a foot inbounds with the ball in his hands. Ruling is a complete pass. And it will stay that way. Oh, well, interestingly enough, it doesn't look like they're going to move the football back. They will keep it where they initially spotted it, just inside the 40. First and 10 Tigers. This is also a time to possibly go for broke. The first time you cross the 50, it's either a, a bomb or a special play. Blake, who has the touchdown catch, is to the left. McCaleb in motion. Trotter tucks it into his belly, and he's stuffed right around the line of scrimmage. Good push from Bobby Wagner once again, who's led the whack and tackles each of the last two seasons. Number nine in white. 
Auburn wants to be a downhill running football team, a lead back. And everything they do, though, ends up being a lead back power running game. McCaleb offset on second and nine. Trotter again on the run, and we'll tuck it and keep it. Steps out of bounds around the 35-yard line after a pickup of four. Good pursuit again by Wagner and Gallagher. Very nice job by Trotter, showing actually pretty good speed on the outside. One of the other things, they've got 224 left in the half. What Auburn would love to do is milk the clock, get it down and score, and not give Utah State the ball back with any time left on the clock. Third and five. See, they're doing a lot of check with me's at the line of scrimmage, making sure they're in the right play. But as they do that, they're taking time off the clock. To McCaleb and nothing but white jerseys around him. Jake Doughty throws him for the three-yard loss. Fourth down coming up. It's a big fourth down. I would think they have to go for it. They're outside field goal range. I don't think they want to punt. Uh, Utah State may consider taking some timeouts on their own. It just you don't want to give them more time because you're getting at that 130 part, and it looks as if it looks as if Auburn may punt now, uh, trusting their defense and maybe special teams to make a play. Fourth and nine from the Utah State 39 after the loss. And again, we saw them practicing fakes with the punt team also and they, they, they have some fakes in there too so i'm sure that utah state as we talk about i see bobby wagner they yeah. took the delay they to took, give their punter a little more room how about this though mike in the first half for an auburn team that likes to run first 30 yards rushing in the first half so utah state has done what it wanted to do first and foremost stop the run and make trotter beat him some other way and that defensive line lapuahu Fili Moyatu are doing the things that Coach Anderson wanted. They're stuffing it up and they're allowing Bobby Wagner to run to the football. Utah State letting Auburn take that delay, by the way, and running some more time off the clock. High punt. They'll have a chance to field it. And they are able to keep it out. Excellent coverage on the punt. 43 yards without a return. And Utah State with its back to the goal line. That was a great punt and great coverage. You see him circling around it down the field. Very lucky, though. Nobody caught it. They can't catch it. But if it breaks the plane to the end zone, it is a touchback. Josh Harris and Chris Davis, the first guys there. Well, with only a couple of races left to the chase, some bubble drivers like Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. looking to make a move in Atlanta. It's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series presented by Pennzoil. Coverage beginning on ESPN Sunday at 6.30 Eastern. As disappointed as Utah State is in getting the ball here with no time left at the two-yard line, they're probably very excited that Auburn did not get any score. The key here is no turnovers. And off the turban. He's able to work his way out of the end zone, out to the five-yard line. I would assume Auburn probably took that time out. Well, the clock continued to run for a little bit there, and about four or five more seconds trickled off. Ted Roof is going to tell his guys, the first guy's got to wrap up, the second and third guy's got to rip the ball out. We get the ball down here, we've got a chance to score before the half is over. Conversely, Utah State is saying two hands on the football. Control that thing. No way. We've got to protect the ball. And protect, well, protection of the ball is all 11 players on the field. Let's take a look back with our Liberty Mutual drive recap. A couple of big drives today for Utah State. Well, again, they're, they're mixing a very powerful run game with Chucky e. Keaton doing his best DeAndre Burrell imitation, running the ball when he needed to and making big plays. That was a 16-play drive, nearly seven minutes long. Their first scoring drive, or second scoring drive, 15 plays in seven and a half minutes. 
Well, they will take a knee. Auburn with one more timeout. Look at the length and the yardage and the time off the clock. And, and what that points to is the execution. They're doing a great job of executing their offense. And Auburn won't bother taking the time out there. They did not have an, uh, another one to stop the clock after third down anyways. So the Utah State Aggies looking for the first road win against a ranked opponent in school history. And they are up a score on the defending national champs. Our score at halftime, 21 to 7. And the last time a defending national champ lost the opening game of its following season, Miami in 1990. Some work to do for the Tigers in the second half. Now let's join Wendy Nix for the ESPN College Football Halftime Report. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Now the defending national champion has not lost its opening game in 21 years, but Auburn trailing Utah State by a touchdown as the Aggies have been dominating time of possession and their ground game really chewing up big chunks of yardage. They had a couple of scoring plays, one of 15 yards, one of 16. And look at all the pluses there in their keys to the lead. 80 more yards rushing, 10 more minutes with the ball, four fewer penalties, and 26 more plays than Auburn in that first half. Ball control. They're doing it exactly what they want to do today behind that veteran offensive line. Auburn to receive the kick, and then we'll see if they can get their running game going. They had more penalty yards than rushing yards in the first half of play today. Be Quan Bray this time bringing it out. The cut back around the 30 yard line. And falls forward to the 35. 33 yards on the return for Quan Bray. Beth Mullins, along with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti, here at Auburn. And the big story today, Mike, has been the dominance of this Aggie offense. Utah State running game. They have run the football. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. Auburn, who is a running football team, has not been able to do that. It hasn't been Barrett Trotter's fault. He's 5 of 5 passing, but they're just not getting it going in the running game. They scored a touchdown on a kick return, and other than that, the one long pass play from Trotter to Emory Blake. That's been the lone bright spot offensively. They've only had 16 plays from scrimmage. And Trotter to air it out. That's his first missed attempt of the day. He had hit on all five of his passes in the first half. He was looking for Trevante Stallworth right there. But that's not a statistic that Auburn wants to see. And a club that rushed for 284 yards a game last year. They knew they were going to lose some of that because obviously Cam Newton was the leading rusher on the team and one of the leading rushers in the nation. You lose him, but they've got great running backs. Trotter looking confident and poised on that throw to Stallworth out to midfield, 15 yards and a first down. To me, I think what they have to do, the biggest mismatch on the field is the passing game of Auburn versus the secondary of Utah State. And I think they've got to force that issue initially to get some momentum going. Here they go now trying to push the pace. They will quickly snap the ball, and the give is to Michael Dyer. Dyer, over 1,000 yards rushing last year. McCaleb, over 800 yards rushing, but neither has been able to crank it up yet today. One of the things, too, Utah State is playing a new front, a 3-4. They're playing variations of the 3-4 and the 4-3, and sometimes that causes confusion in the offensive line just in terms of you're not quite as crisp in, or aggressive in your blocking assignments. Second and nine, McCaleb in motion to the backfield. Little play action for Trotter. Bobby Wagner giving chase and gets him by the shoestrings. The sack for Bobby Wagner didn't rush a whole lot last year. They want him more active in that department this year. And I'm not sure if he was rushing or just reacting to the uh, Trotter sprinting out of the pocket. But again, Trotter was buying time, couldn't find any way open. So good job by the Utah State secondary. Third and nine without a huddle. Check off to the sideline. Auburn does this to get a chance to survey the defense and then make the call that they think is right to go against that front and or coverage look. Trotter 
Gallagher dumps it off to McHale. He's got one man to beat Gallagher, and Gallagher gets him. Short of the first down, and it'll bring up fourth and three. Tell you what, they were in man-to-man. -man. Had McHale been able to recover his balance, he was gone. Gene Chizik talks to his offensive coordinator, Gus Malzahn. No punter coming on. 37 coming in is listed at six foot 291. He's a fullback, Ladarius Phillips. Now he's coming back off the field. I was going to say, they're going to get the big fella rambling there. And a timeout now timeout. for Auburn. Auburn, first timeout of the half. I only count 10 blue jerseys out there on the field. And Gus Malzahn counted them up and now wants to talk about it. ESPN College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. The offense is on the field. It's fourth and three, two and a half. Barrett Trotter's in there, but we saw him practicing quick kicks. They may go out in a formation, decide if they like the alignment or don't like it. Now it's a power running formation. On fourth down, the pitch to McCaleb, and he's got the edge inside the 35 and bumped out at the 30-yard line. First down, Tigers with a pickup of 12. Key fourth down conversion. This is the to belly toss is what we call it. You take the belly one way, toss it back to McCaleb. He's tough to tech in the open field. All he needed to get was two and a half yards. Got a nice block from his wide receiver, Trevante Stallworth, to spring him. Trotter. Under throws Stallworth, who had some space around the 10. Really important. Really important for a team momentum right now to capitalize on that key. You get a fourth down conversion. Now you're in scoring territory. You've got to get a minimum of field goal. You've got to get points on the board. In the first half, Utah State was able to convert on a fourth down, and then they went in to score to give them a 21-7 lead. Three rushing touchdowns for Utah State. Dyer trying to get the ground game going for the Tigers, and he's got another first down and another 12-yard pickup inside the 20. That's the way to get the game going, and you see Gus Mel's on there. Talking about keep the tempo up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Darius Carr in motion, but the give is to Michael Dyer again. Down to the 11. They have not had success running straight ahead today against the Utah State defensive line. They have taken advantage, though, of the flanks and getting on the edge with their team speed. Nine rushes now up to 40 yards for Dyer. Again, no huddle for Gus Malzahn's up-tempo offense. They'll fake the throw and give the ball to McCaleb. Bobby Wagner again reels him in. Nice tackle. He, you know, he was being blocked. Fought it. He tackled him with one hand. He's that strong. He just reach out, grab, take the Caleb to the ground with one arm. Face a third down three. Barrett Trotter, number 14. The quarterback is coming off. We've seen them run some Wildcat already today, and Michael Dyer is set to take the direct snap. They're discussing the fourth down play if need be on the sideline with the quarterback right now. Dyer will keep it. They won't need that fourth down. In the locker room at halftime, I'm sure Coach Chizik talked about the fact that, guys, we get the ball. Let's make a statement. Let's take it down and score. Let's tie this game up. Let's get the momentum on our side. They go 11 plays. They cover 65 yards, most of it on the ground. And Michael Dyer now starting to heat up. Did not get the start today. Had been banged up in the preseason. And there was a little bit of mystery shrouding how much he would be able to deliver today. Extra point is good. The Auburn Tigers, they want to run first, and they want to run often with this guy, Michael Dyer, the MVP of last year's BCS championship game.
ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Kingsford Charcoal. For your chance to win $10,000 and support your college team, play Kingsford's College Showdown on ESPN.com at Axe Shower Gel. The Auburn Tigers with its most impressive possession of the day as they go 11 plays, 65 yards for the touchdown, and they churned it out on the ground to get into the end zone. Michael Dyer finishing things off with an 11-yard run. Much more inspired. A little pep in their step coming out of the locker room. And the kick, they won't get three points for the field goal, but impressive nonetheless. And it was heading into the locker room, Mike Bellotti, that Gene Chizik started getting his team ready. As we take another look at this going through the uprights. This is a pretty good kickoff, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> Hits there and bounces through. That's, that's a kicker that's pumped up, too. Not just the team, but the kickers, too. Gene Chizik told us yesterday, there's a certain thing, way we do things here at Auburn, whether we are favorites to win the national championship or whether we got 24 freshmen on the roster. Robert Turbin in the backfield, and they're trying to get Chuck Jacobs some space, and he can't find any. Darren Bates on the tackle. Here's Chizik heading into the locker room. And watch him. Winning is not a sometime thing. Winning is an all-the-time thing. He's getting on guys that are walking off the field saying, hey, we don't walk around here. It doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter who we are, where we are. We run off the field. It's an attitude you take about winning. They looked good offensively. Can they match it now with their defense against Chucky Keaton, the true freshman? who was 11 for 13 and 97 yards passing in the first half. To the air again. They really like the speed of Jacobs, and they're trying to get him some touches here. He's got the first down. He's their big play guy. He's their Ontario McCaleb. He runs 10-7 and 100 meters. He may be the only guy on the roster we see a track time for, but the reality is they want to try and shake him loose because he has the speed to take it all the way. First and 10 for the 32. The Aggies have come close the last couple of years to pulling off a major upset. They need a big second half here to get it against Auburn. Looking for Turbin incomplete. Well, college football returns to ABC tonight. It's the Oregon Ducks and the LSU Tigers. Got the Cowboys Classic coming for you from Dallas. All a part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week Saturday at 8 on ABC. College football lives here, both sides with some key components that will be missing tonight. Well, I know the Ducks are just happy to have uh, Darren Thomas, who actually turned down going to LSU as an athlete, to go to Oregon as a quarterback. Second and ten. Pistol with Michael Smith now on the move. Keaton. Life is one across the middle and a completion for another first down 11 yards to number 11 Stanley Morrison well, How about those Oregon Ducks and not only Thomas but LaMichael James who led the nation in rushing last year And LaMichael James they'll get a steady dose of Michael James because they don't have the depth at receiver this year They're gonna have to run the football. They miss Cliff Harris a very dangerous punt returner for this game So I, I expect a huge dose of LaMichael James if LSU can stop that it's gonna put Oregon in, in trouble Harris is out for an off-the-field incident. So are two of the key playmakers for LSU, Russell Shepard and Jordan Jefferson. Terry Roy jumped the gun. Number 88, start, start. Number 66 on the offense. 25 yards. Down remains short. Actually, what happened there is the tight end was going to trade or move from one side to the other. When he moved back, it actually triggered the offensive lineman next to him, thought the ball had been snapped, and so he just reacted, unfortunately. They had done a nice job. Utah State, for the most part, has executed very well today. Just their second penalty today for a veteran team in a hostile environment. Michael Smith. A little shake and bake, but... Jonathan Evans wasn't buying that. The junior from Pritchard, Alabama on the stop. We've seen all day when Auburn sits back, the experience and the decision-making of the running backs at Utah State generally prevails. When they come after people and stop it before it gets started, they've been very effective. A little muddle huddle right here as they get set with five receivers.
Keaton through the hands of Turbin, who couldn't come down with it. Keaton has thrown several great passes today. The trouble sometimes when he's under pressure trying to get rid of the ball quickly, you don't finish your throw, and that's something that he'll learn with experience. But he's done a great job. But those last couple throws have all been high. Again, not finishing and following through. 13 for 17 now on the day for Keaton. This is third and 16. He converted a third and 20 in the first half. D4 bringing some heat. Keaton eludes it. Incomplete, almost picked off by Nico Thorpe. He was looking for Matt Austin, who was double covered. And Demetrius McNeil may have tipped that one. Nice job again by Chucky getting outside. Ball right through the fingertips, outstretched. He put that ball where it needed to be, despite the rush of D Ford. D Ford coming off the edge, this is is unbelievable. Very, very tough to block. So the open three. Three. Ted Roof called D Ford a rocket coming off the edge. And now on the putt, Trevon Reed, it will go over his head. He will grab it inside the five and bring it back outside the ten. 60 yards on a booming punt from Tyler Bennett. Eight twenty-seven to go on the third. Auburn scored on its last possession. They've got it back when we return. Tied at 21, 8.27 to go. Those are the Tumor Oaks at Tumor's Corner. They've been there for over a hundred years and the long-standing tradition to toilet paper those trees after big wins uh, in the offseason. Uh, of course, uh, the big story around here, those trees are ailing after a man has admitted to poisoning those trees. Rescue efforts are well underway to try and save the trees. They expect to know a lot more about the Tumors Oaks next spring. But certainly one of the great traditions in college football and Auburn fans and really around the SEC Ball hope start. they can Number six continue five on that. the offense, five-yard penalty, now remains first. You saw right there the Utah State defensive line was going to stem. We call it late moving prior to the snap, and it threw off the offensive line of Auburn. They jumped off sides. That's one of the things that they talked about with this new-look defense, jumping from a 3-4 to a 4-3, moving the lineman prior to the snap to change blocking assignments. First and 15 for the Tigers. They had more yards rushing on their first drive of this third quarter than they did the entire first half. With Michael Dyer leading the way, and number five in blue gets the carry again. Shoved out of bounds by Bobby Wagner. Pick up a four on the play. Dyer able to punch it in from the 11-yard line on their last possession. How about that? Three first downs, 30 yards in the first half. Four first downs, 44 yards rushing on that last drive. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Trotter back to throw and complete. I think, Mike, sometimes the tendency is to think of this Gus Mal's on offense as a gun-slinging, wide-open type of offense, but they actually, last year, had more rushing attempts and more yards per game than the Wisconsin Badgers did. Yeah, they were a running football team with two great runners in both Cam Newton and Michael Dyer, both over 1,000 yards in the same backfield. We saw the placards. They're using uh, the symbols now on the sideline to relay plays in, as we're seeing more and more around college football. A couple of former presidents represented on that Auburn sideline. Trotter to the air again. Thought about throwing back across the field. Now tucks it in, and Barrett Trotter held up around the 11-yard line. That was a screen play. He had linemen downfield. He could not throw the ball to anybody else. They covered the back. Yeah, you can see the set as it's set up. Those guys are open, but they can't throw the ball because they're linemen downfield. That play would be called back. So even though you got wide open guys, the linemen have already crossed the line there down the field on a screen. He's got to scramble and make whatever he can. Those linemen are only able to go a few yards upfield. Otherwise, they become ineligible when they're running that screen. Stephen Clark will punt it away from his own end zone. Motes and Williams back deep. Ah. Kerwin Williams, ball pops 
loose. Utah State recovers, and the question is whether Ontario McCaleb was there well in advance of the football. Yeah, I think that might be contact prior to the catch. You have to give the guy the opportunity to catch the ball. Possibility here that this will set Utah State up in Auburn territory. And Ontario McCaleb so catch fast. Interference on the kicking team. Penalty 15 yards at the spot of foul. First down. Well, before the snap, let's check in right now with Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you very much. Sports Center right now, presented by Miller High Life. Just up the road in Tuscaloosa, no problem for number two, Alabama. The tide's rolling. That's Trent Richardson on the carry. Bama leading Kent State 24 to nothing. Two touchdowns for Richardson. And Chicago continues cutting down to their 53-man roster. The Bears release veteran running back, Chester Taylor. Beth? Thank you, Wendy. Well, with Trent Richardson, Mike, uh, or Marcus Lattimore at South Carolina, might it be three Heisman trophies in a row for the SEC this year? Certainly got a chance. They're going to they're gonna turn Richardson loose this year. Cam Newton of Auburn won it last year. Mark Ingram two years ago. They'll bunch up the tight ends on the left side. Turbin in the backfield, and Robert Turbin will head for those ends. He's knocked out of bounds and a flag in the backfield. That's typically where they call holding on somebody, but we'll see they had that cadre of tight ends into the boundaries you said. It's a power running formation, certainly. Obviously, that's going against Utah State because Bates trying to get the attention of the sideline. How about a guy that's won a Heisman Trophy and a national championship in the same year? And of course, Cam Newton did it last year, and that's the rest of the slate. Newton, it was announced yesterday, will be the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. The number one draft choice will start his pro career against Arizona this weekend. He's already up there alongside Bo Jackson. It's not a bad one and done. National <laughs> championship, Heisman Trophy, then you move on and start at the next level. First and long, and the catch by Austin gets by a defender inside the 20-yard line for Matt Austin, who's back from the injury a year ago. That's the guy they look for. They say he's got the best hands. He'll catch the ball in the crowd. He'll make the physical catch. Nice job here. You see him get off the bump there, catch the ball, and then make the first guy miss. Add a lot of tack, a lot of yards on the end of the run. 33 yards on the pickup. Keaton will give the turban. Turban to the 15. Jake Holland, the middle linebacker on the stop. But there's two guys, Mike Bellotti, that they didn't have last year due to injuries. There's a total of four backs and receivers that have returned big-time weapons back in the stable for the Aggies. No question that Robert Turban is the guy. I mean, almost 1,300 yards the year two years ago and really the key cog in that offensive attack. Let's see if he gets stronger as the game progresses. That's what the coaches claim about Turbin. He'll catch his breath right here as Michael Smith now the setback. Smith greeted by Igwe back at the 20, thrown for a loss. No see Igwe, the silent, steady leader of that defensive line. It just He's a great example, makes every play, beats the guy across his face inside, and has one-on-one -on -one tackle. Grabs him, gets a little help, and slams him to the turf. How about Exclamation his, point. How about his comment yesterday when you asked him what he loved about football? He said, oh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> yeah. Just you and the guy across from you. He's forced a third down and ten right here. Timeout called by Auburn. Timeout. Auburn. Second timeout of the half. So the Tigers will have just one timeout remaining for the final 20 plus minutes. To Sharvin Bell called that timeout. He's the leader of that secondary. He plays both corner and Nichols. We talked about shaking up early back in the game now, but they really like him and he can do so much for that defense. 
Well, tonight, Kellen Moore and the Boise State Broncos begin their BCS charge as they take on Aaron Murray and the Georgia Bulldogs, the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic, all a part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN and ESPN3 Saturday night. Coming up later at 8 Eastern, you can also watch it streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. Beth Mullins along with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti here at Auburn. And Boise State had another opportunity to take on one of the big boys to start out the season. It's tough. they got to go back to not quite a neutral site. Kellen Moore is one of the greatest quarterbacks, but they don't have the depth of the explosiveness at wide receiver they've had in the past. Georgia's got a great defensive secondary and great special teams. I, I think it's going to be tough on Boise this year. Great football game, though. Third and ten for Utah State. Keaton out of the gun. Lemonier trying to corral him. Chucky Keaton lobs it forward, incomplete. <laughs> Chucky Keaton never saw somebody like Nosy Igwe back at Cypress Creek High School last year. No, and as you watch this, you can sort of see, look for an open receiver. There's nobody right. One guy in the corner, he gets picked up late. Everybody has a man around him. And again, Chucky does a great job of scrambling and actually saved the yards. That tossing the ball away at the end was to save the yards rather than get set. Josh Thompson who didn't play last year. He's a local kid from Logan, Utah. His first attempt from 34 yards out. Perfect. Utah State regains the lead. They're up on the road 24-21. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. The defending SEC champion, the defending BCS national champion. In trouble in their season opener. They trail the Aggies of Utah State 24 to 21. Just under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. 15 wins in a row, including that 14 and 0 season last year for the Tigers. The Aggies haven't cared one bit about the resume. They have brought a very experienced team in here and have more than handled their own. Kickoff is headed in the direction of number four, Quan Bray. They have one kick return for a touchdown. They won't get another one here. But for the Aggies of Utah State, they are trying to do something that they have never done in their history, and that's beat a ranked opponent on the road. Their one win versus a ranked opponent was at home against Fresno State 20 years ago before a lot of these guys were even born. They've been close. Last year, they took Oklahoma the fourth quarter within striking distance, so they've been there. Give Gary Anderson kudos for building this program where they can compete with a team like Auburn on the road. Barrett Trotter. In his debut as the Auburn Tigers quarterback. They'll set up the receiver screen. They want to get Trevon Reed some space. And he is closed down quickly. Great job by the wide receivers there continuing to block. It wasn't their guys that made the tackle. It was a pursuit from the inside. But really nice job. I was impressed. I'll tell you what, that's hard. What receivers, they, don't, they say, I'm not paid to block, guys. Throw me the ball. Trotter will stay on the sideline for the third time today. We see the Wildcat with Michael Dyer. Dyer's got it. He'll run right. And again, not a lot of space, but maybe just enough for the first down. Al Lapuajo with the tackle. Their two big Polynesian junior college transfers have been filling up a lot of gaps. Up front, Lapuaho and Fili Moyatu. They've got four junior college transfers that have joined the starting lineup for them defensively. Lapuahu is what, who they're building the entire defense on. That 3-4 requires a nose guard that can basically two-gap at the center position. They feel he has that ability and can be the cornerstone of this new 3-4 defense. Just short. 
Heading to third down. Well, let's take a look at today's Dave and Buster's playbook. Since we just saw the Wildcat, Mike, they've also scored on that today. And Dyer's one of those backs that, you know, he can bump in there. He's not very big, but he gets ahead of momentum. He's a strong runner and can make yards after contact. Had no contact on that play. Well, it looked like they were no short, but they just did get enough. So first and ten. And Barrett Trotter back out there. Reed isolated on the cornerback. And out across the 45, Nevin Lawson held him from the big game. That's the third catch today for Reed. And again, this is what scares me uh, as we go forward. It's the Auburn passing game, the receivers against the cover people of Utah State. I think that's the biggest disadvantage that Utah State has and certainly an advantage Auburn needs to press. They'll go to Reed the other way this time. And he's got a first down across midfield. They're really taking a page from the Utah State playbook. That's what they had Chucky e. Keaton do the first five times he threw the ball. Throw it laterally out to the wide receivers in space. Let them work one-on-one -on -one with field. Five-yard pickup. When we talked to Barrett Trotter yesterday, we asked him, do you, do you talk with Gus Malzahn about plays that you like to run? He said, absolutely. We've got a, a short list, and I think that little bubble screen, the receiver screen, is one of them. And now the true freshman Kyle Frazier is in at quarterback. And Clint Mosley, the backup, with the pass to Ontario McCaleb. And the trick play inside the 25. Mosley, great patience on that. They wanted to go deep to the crossing route. You can see this develop down the field. They want to hit Emery Blake. He's not there. McCaleb sneaks out of the backfield down the sideline. He's got the presence of mind to find him, put the ball in the money, and then watch out when McCaleb touches the ball. The second and third string quarterbacks in on that play. And now back to QB1. Barrett Trotter and a snap goes through his hands. And Barrett will fall on it back at the 39-yard line. And you don't know if that was a freshman center or the quarterback just taking his eyes off it. Or sometimes you hear a stray sound and you think that was a quarterback calling us down. I think that went right through Trotter's hands. I don't think that was on Reese Dismukes. I think it really is just something where the quarterback sometimes wants to get a look towards the mesh point or towards the running back. you got to focus on the snap the entire time when you're in the shotgun. A couple of fakes from Trotter. He wanted to go deep, and he's got Starworth wide right open at the 20. The cutback at the 5. Touchdown, Tigers. And they've got the lead. talked about this earlier. I think the biggest mismatch is the Auburn receivers against the secondary of Utah State. Given time, Barrett Trotter, tremendous throw, found the open guy, and then an unbelievable move to get in the end zone untouched. Well, and no disrespect to Barrett Trotter, who made a couple of nice passes on both of his touchdown throws, but it was the speed and the yards after catch from Blake and Stallworth that got them the seven. Absolutely. See it right here. Play action fake just holds hold, holds everybody. He slides in the pocket, which a veteran quarterback will do. Puts it on the money, and then whoa, shake, check that guy's ankles. Fun for a receiver to do that going into the end zone. Well, we hate to say it, but it was Terrell Thompson <laughs> that we might need a new tape job after that cutback from Stallworth. And a sweet move for the junior from Leesville, Louisiana, with his first career touchdown catch. Remember the receiving core, all new this year as well for Auburn. And Barrett Trotter has a couple of touchdown throws in his debut. The guy who was living out the dream, a converted Alabama fan as a kid, but now getting the chance to be out there for the Auburn Tigers. And that was a question mark coming in but with Emory Blake and Toronto Stallworth, uh, Trevon Reed. Quinn Carr, you know, those guys, I think they can play. I think Auburn's going to surprise some people. So now how does Utah State respond? They are down for the first time today. Remember, Coach Anderson said we have to be able to handle prosperity if we're ahead. 
or adversity if we're behind them. They've been there before. They've played big games at Oklahoma State, excuse me, at Oklahoma, at Texas A&M. They're in this game. I don't see them folding. However, Auburn is hungry right now, and they're not defending national champions for nothing. They'd love to unleash Kerwin Williams on a kick return, but again, no chance. Let's send it now back to the studio. Here's Wendy. The Thank You Virginia Tech has lost their last straight, three straight season openers, but the Hokies clearly don't want to lose this one. Logan Thomas to Randall Dunn up 38-0 over Appalachian State at the half. Well, the Tigers have been in trouble at times today. They have come back to take the lead. They had some huge come-from-behind wins last year, including against Alabama and then beating South Carolina. They took Clemson in overtime, and then they didn't have to come from behind, but they won the national championship on the last-second field goal from West Byron over Oregon. Turbin, a lot of room up the middle. 19 yards on the carry. Well, let's take you back to Phoenix. Yeah, the BCS championship game with Cam Newton at quarterback. And it's Cody Burns with the score and then the last second heroics. Tremendous game. And again, I think Auburn was the better team, no question, and persevered. Great run, though, by Michael Dyer. Still saying that was the turning yep. play in the entire game. We talked to... Uh, Coach Chizik about that and some of the players, uh, Philip Lutzen, Kirkin, their tight end. He said our our celebration lasted a couple of weeks. We we had some uh, some time off and then the parade here in town and after that it was back to the weight room. And he said they've moved on as a team. They've moved on. They understand it. They're proud of it. We recognize it. But again, it doesn't help them win games this year. Keaton completes it to Marks across midfield. Thrown down by Harris Gaston. 12 yards on that pickup. Good for another first down. Sometimes, Mike, can you turn that negative of losing so many guys into a positive because you've got young guys that are hungry and not complacent? Well, and young players really don't read the hype. They're, they they just think they can win. They, now, it doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen just by putting on the uniform. you got to make plays. Kerwin Williams, who had the big touchdown run in the first half inside the 20. By the way, they're not just any freshmen. They are two top five recruiting classes over the last two years that are getting a lot of time today for Auburn. Back to back. But right now, Utah State is opening gaping holes in the Auburn front. Right now, Beth, you and I could have run through that last hole for five yards. I wouldn't want to get hit, but we could have made some yards. <laughs> You'd be my fullback on that. I'd follow your lead. Well, there were question marks about Carter and Whitaker in the center of that defensive line, and that's where Utah State has been attacking. They go at them again, and this time Igwe came over from the end position to help bottle it up. Time expires at Jordan Hare at the end of the third quarter. The Tigers are in front for the first time today. to 24 Auburn with the lead over Utah State as we get set to start the fourth quarter the Aggies working on a major upset to start out the new year third and a couple from the Tigers 40 and the true freshman Chucky Keaton spins for the first down to the 36 yard line he called his own number run the speed option you see him coming off the edge blitz is coming makes it a little bit easier should have probably pitched that but he said i'm going to keep it i want to make sure control of the football and as a true freshman the biggest thing is that can they make sure they do not turn the ball over or put the ball on the ground when darren base there tried to knock him over instead of wrapping him up they could have had him behind the yardage line instead it's first and ten The true freshman Keaton thus far playing turnover-free football. 
neither side has a giveaway, which is something that both coaches would appreciate in a season opener. He had to hold the ball there, but he took a shot. I will tell you what. You can see this coming off the edge as he gets rid of the ball, and then he is face planted right there. He'll think about that one for a while. Yes, yes, Igwe. The redshirt sophomore who was a starter last year, one of the hardest working guys on the team, told us yesterday, I want to make big time plays. Made a good one right there. Keaton drops it off for Austin, who turns to the outside. Forward progress will get him to the 31. And that'll set up a third and five. Chris Davis, the sophomore on the tackle. Really impressed with the awareness of Chuck Keaton. He rolled out that time under pressure, threw, the, threw a strike down the field. Just to know that that receiver was there is pretty amazing. Keaton, quick release, Austin with the slant and another first down. Inside the 25-yard line, they were working on Chris Davis. That's five catches now for Austin. Davis, the best cover guy. Austin, the best hands guy. Great matchup. You see this. The little slant pattern works him hard. Gets the inside position. Nice throw for the completion in the first down. Tenth play of the drive. They have already scored on two scoring drives of 15 plays or more. It's Kerwin Williams to the 20. Chris Davis knocked him out. The question as you get down here is, if you have to, do you kick a field goal? You try to get the first down to go for the touchdown because a field goal doesn't put your head or tie it up. But it does give you the chance to go ahead later on with the field goal. So all the things that coaches think about at this point in the game. Keaton to Stanley Morrison. Gets away from one guy, and then D. Ford has him close to another first down. This is an Auburn defense now, coach, that has been on the field for 64 plays already. Not used to being out there this much. No, and it hasn't gotten any cooler over the course of the day. Great awareness and mobility by Keaton to get away from the unblocked guy. This is a screen all the way, but still, that guy came in clean, and he makes a nice throw on the move. They'll bring the chains out. That'll give us a chance to tell you that Chucky Keaton is now 17 for 25. Make that 18 for 25 on that last toss. Out of Cypress Creek High School in Houston, Texas. He's a computer engineer major. The coaches have raved not only about his physical skills, but his mental ones as well. No, and the mental ones, the, the, the ability to see the field, peripheral vision, the management of the game, his own ability to control when you get an onrusher coming at you unblocked. I'm really impressed with his poise. Third and inches. They've got Tiawa, the tight end, in the backfield with Turbin. And Turbin's got it inside the 10-yard line. What a job by this offensive front controlling the trenches. And another long, sustained drive. We call that play power OG. They pull the off guard. That's their favorite play. They've run it several times in short yardage. They trust Robert Turpin to get the first down. The chains are down, so it's first and goal. Darren Bates showing blitz off the right. Turbin up the middle for a couple. Craig Sanders comes off again. They continue to shuffle in defenders to try and beat the heat. The Aggies, they have one win in their history against an SEC school. That was in 1970 against Kentucky. Trying to double that win total today. Working on one of the biggest in school history right here against the defending champs. Keaton calls his own number again. Chucky Keaton to the goal line and in. 
The first career touchdown for the true freshman from seven yards out. And the linesman down in the lower yeah. part yeah. of the screen had his hands up. One official signal a touchdown. The other may have signaled it down. It'll be interesting to see. They may want to replay this. Look at, yeah. Uh, Watch him coming in. There are the arms yeah. up. But he right now is talking to one of the other officials. They're calling it a touchdown. And they have signaled it a touchdown. We got us a ball game, guys. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Boy, as good as the two quarterbacks were last night in that Baylor TCU game, Chucky Keaton won't have the same stats, but how about the Moxie? They've got four rushing touchdowns today and the late lead. Chucky Keaton with a couple of rushing touchdowns. They have dominated on the ground and a 31-28 lead with 11-20 to play on the road in the SEC. Mason and Gray are back. It will be Trey Mason. He's got a 97-yard kick return for a touchdown in the first half, and he'll get out close to the 35. Here's Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. Northwestern sophomore quarterback Hayne Coulter making his first career start with Dan Persa out. But here's Mike Trumpy on the carry from five yards out. And Northwestern leading Boston College 24 to 10. That's a good start for Northwestern in the new revamped Big Ten with uh, Nebraska joining the league this year. Well, especially with Persa out, I thought that was going to really be difficult. But there, Northwestern's a very good football team, and they're a tough preparation. Trey Mason will stay in the backfield now with Trotter. He's the true freshman from Lake Wales, Florida. Fights off a stick right at the line of the scrimmage from Bobby Wagner and Kyle Gallagher got him around the legs. You know, fans and coaches are only judged by the wins and losses, but the, the quarterbacks today, Keaton and Trotter in their first extended, they're doing a great job. They're really playing very, very well. And they have handled the running game thus far for Auburn. The Tigers have done a better job here in the third quarter, but they were held to just 30 yards rushing in the first half. Trotter on the rollout, Lapuahu forcing him to throw it away. Great job by the Utah State secondary sprinting to the field only you only have to worry about half of the field really you can't throw back to the right hander going to your left so you really focus and the safety's cut down they ran an out in a corner sort of a double move route to the outside nobody open throw the ball away save the down and distance Auburn two for seven on third downs today eight yards to go here Now it's Gary Anderson over on the far side that wants timeout. to turn out. Utah State. For First Utah State, the they will have two remaining with 10.33 to go, and the Aggies on top. ESPN's College Football is presented by 5-Hour Energy. 5-Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Visit 5-HourEnergy.com. And in part by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. We saw last night on the ESPN networks, Baylor upsetting 14th ranked TCU. Utah State working on an even bigger one here at Auburn and a big third down play for the Tigers. Beth Mullins and Mike Bellotti at Jordan-Hare Stadium and the defending champs, all that they can handle from the Aggies today. Trotter and Barrett Trotter gets away from one man a flag down in the backfield Trotter's still in trouble and he will go down at the 27 yard line caught by Walter McClinton and Kyle Gallagher with some great pressure and the initial response 
Levi Koskin was the man that almost this got it. I think it's uh, yeah, it's against uh, Auburn, and they're going to decline it. Great pass rush. This this just they had a guy Number open down the field. On the offense. Decline. Fourth down. That was Koskan that missed on the first chance. Charter again trying to run and find some people. Just couldn't get untracked there. Good defensive stand from the Aggies. That'll force the punt. That's a huge play. And you know, last week you talked about Robert Griffin the third RG3 for Baylor. Wow, what a did he burst on the scene? Talk about Heisman Trophy early candidates. Mm -hmm. And Casey Mahal didn't do a very bad job either. He brought him back. TCU gave him a chance to win. Fair catch called for by Moats at the 35-yard line. 39 yards on the punt. Utah State with the lead and the ball. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And some dicey moments for the defending champs. 10.02 to go, and they trail Utah State. 31 to 28. The Aggies with the ball, first and 10. Chuck Jacobs bouncing to the outside to the 40. Picks up about five. Here's what Utah State is working on joining this select group. Only three times in the last 25 years has a defending champion lost its opener the next year. The last time it happened, Notre Dame beat Michigan to start the 98 season. Four rushing touchdowns for the Aggies, two of them from their true freshman quarterback, Chucky Keaton. He hands it off to Turbin. And hauling him down from behind was Jonathan Evans. Jonathan Evans did a nice job. He played off the block, came back and almost reached out and tried to strip that ball out. And I'm sure that the Auburn defense is thinking turnover stops and turnovers. Keaton to Austin, who makes the catch. Wrapped up by Nico Thorpe, but I think the Aggies got a very generous mark. If it's at the 45, it should be enough. Great spot, but it's where the ball was, not where the body was. So again, caught on the outside. Take a look and see if we can see this. He waits on this. Nice protection inside. It looks like he caught it past yep. the line. So it's a good, good call. Good call by the linesman. That's six catches for 67 yards now for Matt Austin. One of four skill guys back from an injury this year that was out last season. Turbin. Picks up one. Evans again there in the middle to stop it. There was some confusion on the read that time, and one of the things is the defensive end, the quarterback reading that, tries to hold it as long as he can to make the defensive end commit. He can see he's open there. This guy comes down. He's sort of waiting to see. He probably should have given it right off the bat. Unless that guy comes at him, it's a give call. Lots of running room for Morrison. Inside the 30, three guys take him down. At the 23-yard line, another big play after the catch, 31 on the pickup. Great job on the outside. Watch the two receivers block. Both defenders take outside position. The inside linebacker doesn't get there to fill that hole. The receiver just turns up the field, wide open spaces. Morrison, the senior, who was out all of last year with a foot injury, doctors told him he would never play the game again. And Stanley said, sorry, I've got other plans. That one's on Taryn Lloyd, who should have hauled it in. Want to come back to the thing we talked about earlier. They're throwing laterals. Those long outside passes are behind the line of scrimmage, and they're backwards. The receiver can throw another pass if he wants to. So look for the screen and go to the outside at some point. They're setting Auburn up for that play. That was actually Brad Tyre on the drop. Second and ten. 
Keaton with the action pitch to Williams. Missed tackle by Bates. And that allows Williams to pick up eight. It's rare that you would put a true freshman in the situation where he's going to throw the ball this many times, do the option, do the reads, handle the entire thing. They had talked about maybe playing both quarterbacks. Chucky Keaton has done so well today, they have one quarterback. Auburn's defense allowed a little over 100 yards rushing a game last year. Utah State is over 200 now on the day. They are 8 of 14 on third down. Smith got it. Lemonier couldn't slow down his progress. One of the great things about the option, the read option or read zone, is that you pick up a half a man at the point of attack. It causes indecision in the defensive line. They're not as aggressive. They don't commit fully to their gaps. They have to wait and see a little bit. That allows a running back with momentum to break tackles. Dave Baldwin's offense playing with a ton of confidence today. Again, they go to the receiver. And that little lateral pass. You know, just in case, when I say pick up half a man, that, that is because of the option pitch, because you don't know really who's going to carry the ball. It's either the quarterback or the pitch guy, so that's the half a man that the offense picks up at the point of attack in the defense's mind. Tenth play of the drive. They have scored three times on drives of ten or more plays today. Turbin waits for an opening, gets inside the ten. You know, I talk about the coordination of this football team. You know, when you trade and shift and then motion, all those things, you have to be able to... The tight ends are very aware. Notice they're looking at the guy to make sure he sets before I go in motion. The quarterback doesn't have to worry about that. That's a veteran team and a very well-coached team. the five but he'll be a couple shy of the first down marker they have already gone for it and gotten it a couple of times on fourth down today very successful on fourth downs a field goal only puts you up by six touchdown beaches so again tough decision time now for utah state on the road against auburn in this situation i would go for it because i think you have to be more than a touchdown ahead You know, there's some serious thinking going on right now on the Aggie sideline. Anderson probably letting the clock run down to use a timeout here to get a little further discussion. Yeah, they'll call timeout not to lose it. They're just going to talk about this thing and decide. Thompson, the kicker, has now trotted onto the field. They're showing the kicker, but... It had to be. Well, it had to be a timeout because the clock has stopped. And they didn't move the ball back if it was a delay of game penalty. Not sure what's going on right here. And it is a delay of game, not a timeout. And that's looking over to Gene Chizik. Hey, you want to back him up? And Chizik says, all right, let's move him back. That'll give... Uh, Josh Ch Thompson a little more Play a game. Game ground to cover. Five yard you understand penalty. why they do Fourth that? Yeah. It's a better angle. The farther back you are, you have a little bit better angle. When you're tight on the hash, that's one of the toughest angles for a kicker to make. He's got a 34-yard field goal already to his credit. This will be 28 yards for a six-point lead. They're faking. And the throw... Officials are signaling that a catch was made very close to the marker. 
I think they're going to look at that because it looked like he might have trapped it. It's a great, if, if it's a great catch, it's a very gutsy call, obviously. Ball thrown a little bit low. Picks it off the ground. Looks like his wow. fingers were underneath. And he controlled the ball through contact with the ground. DJ Tialava on the pass from Stanley Morrison. His hands look to be look to be underneath the ball, which constitute a catch. Wow. And he controlled it through contact with the ground. And it looks Previous to be play scared. is on the further review. The ruling on the field is a catch. Tialava'a, the sophomore out of West Jordan, Utah, appeared to get the fingertips under the pass of Stanley Morrison. Will the officials agree? Find out when we come back. Utah State with a three-point lead, and they are trying to keep on to the uh, possession of the ball right here with a, an official review going on on a fourth down pass. The ruling on the field is complete to Tialava'a. There's the official that's going to make the call. She's in pretty good shape to see this. I don't think he's screened by anybody. And the call on the field was a catch. The little bit of film we can see looks like the hands and fingers are underneath the ball. And he controlled it through contact with the ground. Those are the two elements. So we'll see what happens with the replay. That was on the fake field goal attempt. And if it stands, they're three for three on fourth down. Now further review, the ruling on the field stands. Tealava'a. They needed 70, got eight. First and goal, Aggies. One other concern now for Auburn, depending on what happens from a score standpoint, is they have one timeout left. Four minutes, 17 seconds. The clock is becoming a factor in this game. Utah State has never beaten a ranked opponent on the road in 43 attempts. Knocking on the door to try and knock out the defending champions. Ball secure. <laughs> Turbin to the one. Cut down by Lemonier and Holland. They probably will be content right here to pound the ball in, take a lot of time off the clock, hopefully score that touchdown to go ahead by 10. Four rushing touchdowns, 229 yards on the ground for Gary Anderson's club, the former defensive coordinator at Utah, who's been on the sideline for a lot of big games in the Mountain West and now at Utah State. None bigger than this. Turbin waits for the opening and finds it. Touchdown, Utah State. Patience and power. The power of the Utah State line, the patience and experience of the running backs to let the hole develop. The stunned crowd. Here at Auburn today, the defending national champions apparently going to be down by 10, 3 minutes, 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Scoring drives today, 15 plays, 16 plays, 11 plays. That last drive, 14 plays, and they punch it in. Look at the time and the yardage they've eaten up. Utah State has dominated up front all afternoon. Again, yeah, nice job here. Great patience. You see the hole in the drive by Turbin lowering his shoulders. He was not going to be stopped or denied. Big hole right there. Great block by 91 coming across. And again, great push by the offensive line. The fans are quiet. The coaches on the sideline are talking about, we've got to score twice. They've got to look at time, how they're going to handle the time part of it in terms of an up-tempo situation, and then probably there's some type of onside kick depending on how much time is going to be left. How about that look right there? The Tiger fans headed for the exits with 3.38 to go, down 10. And the Utah State team that has come in here today, Mike, and only been penalized four times and did not turn it over once so far. They've executed very well, and the only people that believed that Utah State would be in this game at the end 
was the Utah State team and coaching staff. They talked about it. They talked about they felt very good about the opportunity that was presented to them. This is a scary part to me, the special teams. they got to make sure they tackle this guy on the kickoff return. The second touchdown of the day, and the Tigers are right back in it. Ontario McCaleb, the starting tailback, back to receive to the 35-yard line. Well, with only two races left until the chase, NASCAR heads to Atlanta for the Spring Cup Series presented by Pennzoil. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday night at 6.30 Eastern. They've talked this week about putting the championship season in their rearview mirror, and it seems a long ways away right now. They've got to work the clock. Quickly, Dyer with the direct snap, and Bobby Wagner wrestles him down. Wildcat, what they're hoping is a big play. They're hoping to spring Michael Dyer. I know the fans don't really like it because they want to see him. Barrett Trotter throwing the football, and they're probably going to have to go to that right now. Time is becoming a serious factor. They have burned the Aggies on a couple of occasions with the speed at the receiver position. For long touchdown plays, Trotter up top, hauled in by Blake and steps out of bounds to stop the clock. He's at the 45-yard line, pick up a 21. Blake is their go-to guy. He's the guy that Trotter trusts. He's the guy he believes can make the big plays. And I think this is the matchup. they got to exploit the secondary of Utah State. Four wide outs. Under three minutes to go. Trotter to the air again. Stallworth turns it back inside. Trevante Stallworth across the green. He's got some room down the sideline. Inside the 20-yard line. And they're going to tack on extra yardage. Out of bounds. And the additional shove after the 25-yard gain. Devin Lawson, one of their best cover guys. And you're just trying to make sure that the guy gets out of bounds, but you can't do it. Dead ball, personal foul. Number one on the defense. Penalty, half of this to the goal. First down. Any question there, you got to pull off. But here's a great job coming back across the grain, picking up some blocks, making people miss, and then getting out of bounds when the clock is a factor. Four receiver set again. First and goal from the 10 for Auburn. Trotter, Wagner got him. The preseason WAC defensive player of the year. Bobby Wagner into the backfield, loss of five. They brought him. They believe he's one of the best pass rushers. He and Maurice Alexander, guys, they want to turn loose on the quarterback. He got there that time. Second and goal from the 15, Trotter overthrows Blake. Giovanni Robertson with the coverage. The Tigers 14-0 last year and the Outback Bowl the season before. Their 15-game winning streak in jeopardy. TCU losing yesterday. They had the second longest streak. question now for Gene Chizik is does he try an onside kick or with one timeout does he kick it and believe his defense can stop Utah State and get the ball back to win. Can we get a stopwatch on any of the fans that left? See if they're running a 4-3-40 to get back in here for the final two minutes. Because the Auburn Tigers are back within three points. Nice job of protection up there. And uncovered. Hudson Kirk and swung out of the backfield, came up the sideline. They lost him. Let's check in right now with Wendy Nix. Bet, thank you. Sports Center right now, presented by Miller High Life. 
Chicago continues to work their way toward their 53-man roster, releasing veteran running back Chester Taylor. That news coming just a while ago. And then the Raves came in Iowa City. A rain delay. Iowa, though, leading Tennessee Tech 34 to nothing in the near stage. That Thank you very much, Wendy. Well, the student section has held firm. The band's still here after the Lutzen Kirken touchdown catch. And uh, some of the fans that left their seats for the walkout have now decided to stick around a little while longer out on the walkways here at Jordan Hare. Because this is probably one of the most exciting plays in college football is the onside kick. The hands team is in for Utah State. The onside kick team, whether they choose to do it or not, but it's a great play. And typically it's that pop kick that goes way up in the air, crosses the 10-yard mark, and is live to be caught because it's already touched the ground. There's some great collisions coming up on this play. The front line for Utah State is all running backs and wide receivers just inside their 40-yard line. The good hands team. Based on numbers, you would think the ball is going to go to Auburn's left. That's the direction it heads. A high fly. Auburn's got it. It could not be advanced, though. That will come back to the point of where he caught it, but Auburn will have the ball with 2.02 to go. Outstanding execution. The key to this play is the height of the ball in the air off the ground. You watch this, the fake there. Ball is kicked down in the ground, goes up in the air. The Utah State guys need to block those guys in front. They don't they allow them to come completely clean. He catches it. Emery Blake, their go-to guy, once again has made a key play. And Auburn's attempt to not be defeated in their first game back as national champion. Auburn also has two choices if, in fact, they get down there. They can kick a field goal still to tie it up Seven. or go for it to win. By rule, once a kicking team player catches a kick, the ball is automatically dead. They're going to put some time back on the clock to 2.07, which is where Blake caught the kick. Trotter. With time, Stalwart's got it. They are in the Utah State territory inside the 45. Trevante Stalwart has become a big play guy today. He's graduated. He's making plays all over the field. What about this for Trotter building a legacy in his first start? If he can pull this off, he tucks it under McCallum's arm. Ontario McCallum. To the 34, he got a good block from Quindarius Carr, the wide receiver. The coaches on the sideline, are, we, we're still behind. We need to get out of bounds. We want to score at the very end. The ideal thing would be to take it down, score at the end with no time left. Keep in mind as well, Wes Byram, their All-America kicker from last year, is not here. Cody Parkey is their kicker. He has not attempted a field goal in his career. The sophomore out of Jupiter, Florida. Please put 147 on the game clock. Let's take a look forward for Auburn, brought to you by Sprint, and a tough one coming up with Mississippi State, and then look at their conference road schedule. Ouch. That is a very, very difficult schedule, one of the toughest in the nation. For Auburn, it's ball security, move the chains, get in the end zone. Trotter to McCaleb out of the backfield. Cuts it back inside the... The 24-yard line, tackled by Kyle Gallagher. Four catches for McCaleb out of the backfield. The reality is you've got to do something from a Utah State standpoint to stop this. You can't let them score. You've got to force a field goal. So you've got to keep them out of the end zone. But by doing that, you expose the underside of your defense. 
Try to let some cook and gets out of bounds at the 18. Barry Trotter's being very patient, taking the underneath throws that he can get as Utah State expands their secondary to take or keep Auburn out of the end zone. The underneath zones are vulnerable. Down 10 late, Auburn trying to rally for the win. Trailed 38-28 with 3.38 to go. The quick strike and the onside kick recovery. Trotter, behind car incomplete. Utah State coming with the blitz. Auburn counters with the quick pass, which really negates the blitz, and cut blocking up front to get the hands down. So it's it's a guessing game. It's that, should I blitz? Should I play zone? Can I get there? And which passes am I going to call, whether it be screens or quick passes, to negate the blitz? This is the chess match you love to watch as a fan. Trotter again, gives it to McCaleb, inside the 10, Ontario McCaleb. Creamed at the two-yard line, but it's first and goal, Auburn. 15 yards on the carry from Ontario McCaleb. Now Auburn is in a position to take four cracks at it, take time off the clock, score the touchdown to take the lead. Down to the goal line. Just short. Under a minute and running. The fans that had left still hanging around in the walkways. Will they see Diamond coming in? And there is the signal for the touchdown. This extra point is going to mean something because, again, tacking on the extra point takes away the opportunity that Utah State can tie it with a field goal. Really will put the nail in the coffin. Now it's disbelief from the Aggie fans. 60 seconds ago, they had a 10-point lead. And Auburn with two scores in the last 59 seconds. Dyer Ducks under the pile, and you, it's hard to tell there. I think he's definitely in the end zone. <laughs> you get a better look from up top. Goes down below, lowers his pads. Oh, tough to tell, and I'll tell you, I'm not sure you can tell if his knee was down. Yeah. The ball didn't cross till late. He extended it out there. Hard to, hard to follow in that pileup. And, Mike, I think that's going to be one of those where the, it, the ruling on the field is going to be tough to turn because of our inability to see Dyer's knee. I agree. Unless there's a different view, you can't tell what part knee, hip, anything is down. He does extend the ball. The ball ends up in the end zone. His knees look like they're probably up because there's a player underneath yes. him. They got him by the feet, but not by the knees. Great effort After by both teams. Review, ruling stands. What a comeback by Auburn. In the last minute and a half, a couple of touchdowns. We have transitioned to the Barrett Trotter era. The excitement remains. We have lauded the exploits of Chucky Keaton, the Utah State quarterback, and now we have to add Barrett Trotter to a terrific performance with the two scoring drives late. And now the Aggies must get six to win it. 14 points. Scored late. A touchdown with 1.31 to go, and now a touchdown with 30 seconds to play. 
And a reminder coming up later tonight on ABC, Oregon and LSU, the Cowboys classic from Dallas. It's all part of Pick Sporting Goods kickoff week. College football lives here. Beth Mullins along with former Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti just when it looked like Utah State was going to start the bus and get ready to head home with the biggest win in school history. Auburn says not so fast. The speed of Auburn's receivers, the passing game led by Barrett Trotter, came through when it needed to. We talked about moving to the Barrett Trotter era. They had some magic in the bottle last year. Maybe they still have the genius. Not Cam Newton, but it might be Barrett Trotter. You've been talking the last few days that we've been here how important special teams would be. And a special teams play recovering the onset side kick critical here for Auburn down the stretch well every coach will tell you offense sells seats defense wins games but special teams wins championships <laughs> Auburn knows that they've been had the upper hand in special teams today Williams will watch it go over his head and the true freshman Chucky Keaton has 30 seconds to go 80 yards for the upset 30 seconds, two timeouts. They need some big plays. Typically, it's going to involve, like, seam routes, trying to find the vertical seams inside or deep corner routes that can catch the ball for 20-plus yards and get out of bounds. The secondary for Robert will be in somewhat of a prevent concept, meaning nothing behind them. If they throw underneath, tackle the guy inbounds. Off the edge is dangerous. Chucky Keaton mishandled the snap again, probably one of the first real mistakes he's made today, and then could not find the wherewithal to step up or get away from the pass rush inside the pocket. Utah State. The officials still time talking out. in there. Now they finally Utah State. will give Second the timeout. Timeout to the Aggies, so they will have one left. They lost a couple years ago by a score to Texas A&M last year. A touchdown to Oklahoma. Both of those occasions, they had to come from behind. They had the big league late here, and it has slipped away. This is going to require a minor miracle. If we have one more play, i say it's a major miracle. But the reality <laughs> is that those defensive ends for Auburn, we talked earlier about Lemonier and Ford, are going to pin their ears back, and they're going to be coming off the edge. Chucky Keaton's going to have to get the snap, step up in the pocket, and then maybe move to try to buy time to get a receiver down the field. They added time back on the clock six, at 23. Six yeah. seconds back on. The four-man rush for Auburn, and the linebackers are 15 yards downfield. The secondary, 25 yards back. Here comes Ford again. The flag and probably going to be a hold here on the offense as Turbin can't get out of bounds. He dives up to the 29-yard line. As I said, these guys are coming so hard, so fast. It's really difficult for a tackle to handle that kind of athlete in space on the edge. This is important, too, now for Utah State that the clock had been stopped there because, you know, with the new rule this year about the 10-second runoff with a penalty in the final couple of minutes, but the clock was stopped prior to the snap. As the officials talk about where exactly the spot of the ball will be. Holding number 66 on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Second down. Had the clock been running before the snap, Auburn could have also taken the 10-second penalty. Now we're talking about that major miracle I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Your own six-yard line, 14 seconds, no timeout, and you've got to score a touchdown. You practice these kind of plays, but you've got to make them up.
They may throw one quick out to the sideline to buy a little bit of time and get one more play in. Keaton steps up. Incomplete. Still a couple of ticks left. A lot of teams will practice the last play of the game. Multiple laterals, tossing it across the field. So be ready for some barnyard football. Down 10 with three and a half minutes to go. Then a Luxenkirk and touchdown at the two-minute mark. A dire touchdown with 30 seconds to play for the comeback for Auburn. Last chance for the Aggies. They'll try the screen for 90 plus yards. They will not cover that much ground. Big comeback in the final three and a half minutes for the Auburn Tigers as they erase a 10 point deficit. And the defending champs win their season opener. They got to sweat it out, but they get the W 42 to 38. his first start and guiding the way in those last two scoring drives for Auburn. Barrett Trotter 17 of 23 today for 261 and three tees, but most importantly, no turnovers. Great management of the game. Utah State, they'll take the loss on the road and another opportunity oh so close to getting a win on the road against a ranked opponent and it falls just short. College football scoreboard presented by Acura is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Mike Bellotti and our entire production crew, I'm Buck Mullins. So long from Auburn. Now let's get it to Wendy Nichols in the studio.